You look good, man. Thank you so much. So do you. Yeah, it's good. I've enjoyed being out in California. We're here at Winmark Studios yeah. uh, down in Santa Monica. I think this, this studio, this was a suggestion from you or your camp. Have you recorded yeah. here? Yeah. We were here in here yesterday and the day before. Wow. It's doing actually what? a real <laughs> studio. What were you doing in here? I'm writing some new things. Some new things. Yeah. Um, not for Coldplay, though. Well, maybe. Sometimes, um, as kind of a busman's holiday, I like to try and pretend to be Rihanna. <laughs> and so, sometimes I just come and try and write Rihanna Just songs. on your own. She's not even in the vicinity. She was not in the vicinity, no. No. I don't think she even knows that I did it. This would be an exclusive. <laughs> and, get, and they may not even get to her. Do you get asked a lot by people to contribute words and melodies because you you know you have such a strong sense of that and people are always looking for talented mm -hmm. writers, you know? Uh, f you know, from time to time. Mm. I think um, the reason I particularly am drawn to uh, her is because it, her voice is so perfect and um, it's so different to me that it's it's like going outside of yourself but still doing the thing I love to do. But every time that you've written a song I think that has either been the intention has been to give it to somebody or in fact it has gone to someone whether it's Embrace or Johnny mm. Cash which mm. is both sides of that coin or Rihanna who you have collaborated with you know on your music you, you do have an ability to be able to kind of put yourself in their music somewhat you know it's an adaptable process it's right. not, it sounds like you but it, I think you obviously enjoy it enjoy kind of the fantasy of writing for someone else yes well it's and it is often a fantasy because and case in point one of the things we came up with yesterday we'll keep so sometimes it's like there's a liberation from thinking from someone else's viewpoint where mm. you would say, where I can say things that I, I might not say. Mm. But mm. then we end up keeping that song. It happened with that song Paradise. Yeah. Uh, and it's happened a few times. The intention of Paradise was to write for someone else and then it ended up being a Coldplay song. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Was it was that one for Rihanna and then that's why you kind of brought her into the no, song? No, that was... Um, actually, that was came from being asked about the X Factor. Right. Uh, winner's song. Wow. So and the, and and um, then I played it to Will uh, Drummond, and he said, "No, no, we'll we'll have that." <laughs> 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 and if Will if Will ever says that, then yep. I listen. Yeah. Will seems to have that that role to play in the band, apart from being, as we've established many times before, most improved every every record, except on this one. Very little of Will in this record. No. You know, he he does have that kind of honesty gene, doesn't he? You know, he seems to be very straight. Well, the more that time goes on, the more I appreciate the chemistry of our group, the mm. four of us and then Phil, you know, our secret creative boss, because it becomes apparent what everyone's strengths are. And Will's is really kind of an anchoring. Mm. When I think of him, I really, I, I think of something very heavy and, you know, granite-like in, in a great way, mm. like the base of a statue if you see what I mean yeah and without that the thing topples and so while sometimes we can fall out over you know he's he would sometimes like a darker sound and I, I'm i more like let's make it more like blurred lines <laughs> ultimately that chemistry is what keeps us together so if we're talking about the chemistry of the band and we've never spoken about this and I, I suppose you know almost 15 years on from your first record it's a good time to talk about that <coughs> yeah. let's talk about Johnny I mean what have you learned yeah. about Johnny in relation to the band and, the, and this chemistry well Johnny is really so sweet and I'd say he, he and Phil um, are the, the sort of antidotes to any trouble that might arise between the rest of us Johnny's only lost his temper with me once, which is really incredible. Can you tell us what it was about? Um, all I remember, that it, this was about 2004, he said, I'm, I'm sick of your shit. That was the only time ever in, in the long time that we've been yeah. best friends. And he has just this peaceful thing. And then quietly, he always writes the best bits of the song. You know, his whenever he still has the ability to really elevate a song and make me think wow I wouldn't have thought of that riff there as a guitar player 
I think all great guitar players who work with great singers, in particular that dynamic, they are able to support the emotional resonance of a song in a way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They can wrap you up when you're vulnerable, or they can charge alongside you when you're leading someone into battle, you know, four on the floor. It, it, it's so important, isn't it? And on this record, which we will talk about in depth, because I love it, Ghost Stories, Thanks, um, it does feel like he's really, he's the whole band feel like they're kind of hugging you in a way and surrounding you, oh, well supporting that, you. They're going to make me cry. That's because that's that's kind of we we we're very very tight at the mm. moment. I know that I'm the one that is the front man and the one that's on the magazines and stuff. But you know, of everything we've been blessed with, what we constantly come back to is this relationship mm. because none of us are prodigies or virtuosos and and we've seen lots of bands come and go in the time that we've been around and we've seen the ones that have lasted and uh, we've worked really hard to communicate with each other in a way that brings the best out of everybody and, and that started when we started working with Brian Eno mm. he would say you really have to respect the chemistry between you and and uh, I don't know if we ever told you there was a time when he kicked me out of the band for a few weeks to get everybody else's confidence up because wow. th at that time I could be quite um, strong, strong-minded in terms of it has to sound like this. Wow! And so he taught us a, a bit more flexibility and let everyone get to the end of their idea before any judgment is passed. Amazing! I mean, for someone. And don't worry, guy. We will get to you. I'm desperate to know what Chris thinks yeah. of you as well. <laughs> um, but for you to be in a band as one quarter of this unit to be told by someone with the experience and wisdom and I suppose your respect like Brian Eno to say you need to step aside how did that make you feel at the time well I I was pleased this was after our third album X and Y where we lost our way a little bit Phil wasn't around he was sick and um, I was you know famous um, in like tabloid stuff and uh we, we were coming off the back of a rush of blood to the head. It was just, mm. we, we, our record company was all over the place. It was all like share prices and it was a very wonderful, you know, learning period. But at the time it was chaos. Yeah. And um, so when Brian came in, I, I was so grateful because it felt like we had a te teacher. You know, I, I, I was not aware that you could keep learning after college finished before I met him and now now I, that's all we care about is what can we learn next how can we improve how can we mm. you know as people and as musicians but so when he came in it was like oh thank you it was like a father figure coming in and mm. saying you, you're a very talented band but here's how we should rearrange the furniture <laughs> it's understandable in a way that someone of your age at that time would feel like, you know, well, what is there left to learn? I've released my debut album, Parachutes. It's been yeah. received with this huge level of critical acclaim and success. Russia Blood of the Head was a huge, enormous global success. I mean, that kind of, you know, that speed at which that happens can throw yeah. you off your feet, can't it? Yeah, and don't get me wrong, I wouldn't change a single thing. But I'm so glad that at a certain point, you know, and we were also having... All, all the all the regular troubles that you read about in bands biographies we were having all of that and too early for a behind the music special man but it is too early and, and also we don't think that talking about that stuff is very glamorous so yeah. but all of that stuff was going on and um that's when we bought our own little place and really tried to reconnect as friends and uh we had the guidance of brian and then this guy marcus Travs as well mm. and then phil came back in and you know glorious Technicolor again and um, you survived so it every album since then we've been kind of getting closer and closer and uh, mm. everyone's role within the band is becoming more respected by the others so what is it about Guy? well Guy is um, the sort of hi-fi you know for example on Ghost Stories he's the one that really saw all the mixes home and the mastering with and with Spike Stent and guy, he he <laughs> really amazing. cares about the the detail of yeah, and um, he so for a long long time I've been begging the band you know please could someone else start a song because you know I've, I've I've got I've been given that gift from the universe or from God or whatever mm. you want to believe in mm. that ideas for songs get sent to me through wherever they get sent from. And then I take them to the rest of the band and then we layer it up and that's how we do it. Yeah. And I, f 
for a long time I've been saying, Guy, I know that you write music sometimes on your own. Please, is there any way that you would, you know, give us some of it? <laughs> He's like, no, you won't like it, you won't like it. And um, then one day last February, he very quietly came over to me in our studio and said, oh, Chris, you know, we did this, um, we did this jam yesterday that I think you should listen to. And uh, he did, and it was the beginning of the, that song Magic that we yeah. just put out. Yeah. And then the, the lyrics and everything just came. I was so grateful. And it was, it made me so happy. And that was kind of a, a symbol of the album as a whole of like, we'll, we'll help each other out here. That was the first point that the record began? No, there were lots no. of songs, yeah. but that was the first point where I felt like, okay, everyone is invested in this. Yes. Everyone knows what we're trying to do, which is go a bit more personal and a bit smaller and uh yeah well and yeah. they came and they came to me with that and that's when i felt like okay we're, we're on the, exactly the same page because if, if they'd come in with like a big prod rock <laughs> nine minute bass <laughs> solo i would be like that's you can not imagine really after you'd begged them for songs if you had to turn around and go yeah yeah and that's not gonna work <laughs> i don't know if they'll ever come in with song i think they're shy about that but yeah and also the way we work it's a fun way to work and I'm always amazingly surprised and reinvigorated about the song when Guy puts his part on and Johnny and Will, you know, it, it, it improves each step of the way and that's why we, you know, share all our writing credits because each part is so valuable. Oh, I love that, you know, as well. For those people that are watching this right now, it's very important in music that musicians get paid, <laughs> which is harder and harder these days because music has become a free currency for most people. You can't tell a kid to pay for it now. They just won't understand. They'll be like, what? So when you get you break up your you know your publishing and how you do that it, it can become difficult if artists or bands decide to do that according to who did what lyric and what you know line what musical note and i always think that the greatest stories and there are there are cases like yourself like coldplay where you do go in with this equal approach this yeah it's basically quiz 40 20 20 20. that's how we do it amazing i don't i don't know if we have told anyone that but that's how we do it everything else is 25 25 25 25 25. yeah amazing um let's talk about this amazing record ghost stories which to me kind of is encapsulated by everything we've talked about already which is you know the chemistry of the band coming together as we've established you know the support which you need on a record like this mm. for the subject matter it feels like it's a companion piece in terms of the nature of it with parachutes so it kind of feels like it's kind of could be sonically a bit of an extension but modern with what you've learned with brian and right. marcus and john and all these amazing mm. collaborators um, and for me when i press play on this it felt like this was a journey that began at the start of Viva La Vida, you know, when John Hopkins first stepped into yeah. the camp and gave you a sense of ambience, mm. that there's beauty in that, that you can create drama, you don't just have to start. No, no, and um, this is actually uh, our sound engineer, Dan, makes synth sounds. And then sometimes when I'm demoing before showing the rest of the band, he'll show me some sounds that he's made and this was one of them that amazing yeah and uh then uh, actually my daughter is singing a little bit in there as in well there as well yeah so it's very it's the whole idea of that was just a sort of idea of togetherness through life's challenges yes so you're waiting for a lyric when this starts man and you're waiting for like how are you going to contextualize this first lyric and it's just astounding. Oh thanks. I love this lyric. Is that honest? Was that was that the case when you wrote that lyric? Were you having a sleepless night? Yes, well I've always had sleepless nights. The the idea of ghost stories for me was how do you let the things that happened to you in the past, your ghosts how do you let them affect your present and your future? Because there was a time when I was feeling like they were going to drag me down and kind of ruin my life and the lives of those around me. And I was very lucky to meet a really good uh, Sufi teacher who started to introduce me to the idea of if you sit with your experiences and the things you've been through, they alchemize. Mm. And at the time he said that, I was like, I don't really know what that means, mm. but I trusted that it would work. And 
the more that I was learning about that, the more music just started flowing through. And so most of the lyrics on this album, although they were edited and really, you know, finessed, are very much like just they're just flowing through what I wonder if what, you were what, getting out of the way a little bit and not yeah. sitting down consciously going this is going to be the record we're going to make or I'm going to write about yeah. whether you were just sort of getting out of the way no so those lyrics just came out in one go for this song yeah this song for me and I'm going to read these lyrics which I never do but I have to because right. it's just unbelievable when you put it in context I think of you I haven't slept I think I do but I don't forget my body moves goes where I will is that yeah. correct where, where goes where I will as in terms of where I want it to yes but though I try, my heart stays still. You're killing right. me now. I mean, because this is, this is, no matter how much you try to move on, that sometimes it just doesn't happen. Right. <laughs> and then at the end, to, to, to sum it up and say, this, I guess, is to tell you you're chosen out from the rest. I mean, this in terms of as, a, as, a, as an opening song on a record, yeah. you know, as a listener, that you've been drawn in. Right. Did you Thanks, Zane. That, that's very kind. And it, and it goes on, you know, through the record, and you are completely compelled throughout. Did you know when you finished this song that and you listen back to it, that it would start the record. Did it start to take yeah, shape Yeah, 100%, for you? because, because uh, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm 37, the rest of us are 36, 35, I was like, for one reason or another, everything going on in real life and the way that we see the world, it's like, there's no point in being anything other than completely open and honest. Yes. And so, when that song came out, I was like, oh God, that's it. That's just saying, well, it, it doesn't matter. Some of you won't like this and I'm never going to be as lyrically adept as Jay-Z or, you know, um, Morrissey. Uh, but, but I can sing what I really think or what I'm learning or what I'm feeling. And, and so in a way, I'm, I'm um, happy that we put that there because it puts me at ease with like, it's okay. Mm. I don't really mind what anyone says about mm. this album because it's just the truth. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's, like, it's as true as my nose. And so it, some people have real problem with my nose. What can I do? Yeah, work. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say I wouldn't use the word breakdown. This is about this is more of a, like a, just a realization about mm. trying to grow up, basically. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What, what, what changed for me is I don't want to go through life being scared of it, being scared of love, being scared of rejection, being scared of failure. You just did what it. I'm saying, but then you're then slagging off all the other Oh, it's gone the other way now. <laughs> How interesting. I will stand I'm up I'm saying for what he Kendrick. does. <laughs> <laughs> no, that album's incredible. Unbelievable.